In these cells, trimbolone has a cytotoxic, but also genotoxic effect, resulting in broken chromosome fragments after cell division. And trimbolone potentially has carcinogenic effects to Syrian hamster embryo fibroblast cell lines. Trimbolone, like so many other steroids, reduce thyroxine and thyroid binding globulin levels, which can result in hypothyroidism, a reduction of 45% in serum, which increases growth and feed efficiency. So that's a beneficial effect. But reduced thyroxine and thyroid binding globulin levels can also increase prolactin levels and ultimately cause issues with your libido. Again, this is all stemming from animal models. Um, I'm not entirely sure if any of these animals were administered with iodine to sustain thyroxine production and levels overall or selenium to help with the conversion of T4 into T3, making it biologically active, right? That I couldn't piece together from the scientific literature. So if you do use Trembolone, uh, keep in mind that these uh, thyroid parameters might be altered and you might need to supplement with T4 or T3 if you were to undergo a fat loss phase while using Trembolone. Trembolone increases bone mineralization. It suppresses cancellous bone turnover in estradiol insufficient states. So imagine if you have sufficient estradiol, top of the reference range, or slightly superphysiological, that would be bone mineralization galore. Trembolone protects against visceral fat accumulation, resulting in reduced hypertriglyceridemia, hyperinsulinemia, and myocardial damage. Trembolone induces lipolysis from adipose tissue. This is the release of fat from body fat stores. This effect is coming from strong androgen receptor activation, moderate glucocorticoid receptor inhibition, and reduced adipogenic activity. Trimbolone also inhibits lipogenesis in adipose tissue. This is the formation of body fat, but in both instances, this is only in the absence of circulating estradiol. So to bring it all down, right, to digest this for the audience. When estradiol is high, it means that you get an overall anabolic effect through multiple different pathways. But when estradiol is under control or severely diminished, this promotes fat loss overall, right? Food for thought. Trimbolone downregulates brain aromatized enzymes and upregulates gonadal aromatized enzymes, but that's only in female fish, not in male fish. Again, food for thought. Trimbolone decanoate impairs memory function, but it's also valid for testosterone decanoate or nandrone decanoate, ester formulations, but we'll address this in a separate video discussing brain health in the context of anabolic androgenic steroid, where I pull all of the data together for us to enjoy and review and maybe deter us from steroid use forever. Trimbolone shows a dose-dependent inhibition of human serum peroxinase 1 enzymes, which increases oxidative stress to high-density lipoprotein, low-density lipoprotein, and the macrophages that would break down these lipoproteins, which increases arteriosclerotic potential of lipids, which is a little bit worrying, but I'm sure it's the same case for all of the other steroids out there, albeit that it hasn't really been investigated in this context. Human peroxinase 1 enzymes are critical to neutralize free oxygen radicals, inactivate the formation of oxidized phospholipids in oxidized low-density lipoproteins, and to neutralize the effects of orthogenic lipid peroxidases. The PON1 gene is expressed by peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma activation, which then increases the synthesis and release of peroxinase 1 enzymes from the liver, reducing arteriosclerosis. Cancer issues aside, you might be able to offset these negative suppressive effects of trembolone with cardarine or another PPR gamma agonist. And don't forget your azetamide for sake to lower your low density lipoprotein levels, which are basically a building block for plaque buildup when LDL is oxidized and turned into foam cells by macrophages, right? please do your blood work while taking Trembolone because all of these things will overlap and compound the longer you take the Trembolone sandwich. Trembolone disrupts the circadian rhythm, which causes altered sleep-wake related behaviors. It increases the stress to light stimulation, but it might also cause systemic metabolic disorders. And Trembolone also increases amyloid beta-42 concentrations in the brain, potentially contributing to Alzheimer's disease formation and progression through the buildup of amyloid beta plaque. Now, both of these conditions might be minimized or attenuated by melatonin supplementation, but we'll get into that a little bit later on when we get to the neurotoxicity segment of this video. Trembolone potentially depletes glutathione stores stemming from in vitro studies. Monooxygenase enzymes generate reactive trimbolone metabolites, which might be genotoxic, and it increases glutathione S-transferase activity. So if you take the trimbolone sandwich, 
Some n acetyl cysteine or injectable glutathione might be a wise idea. Trembolone offers strong anti-influenza A-virus activities through an unknown mechanism. I'm sure you've guys heard it many a times anecdotally that on Trembolone, I wasn't able to get sick with a common cold, influenza the flu. Maybe it won't work for the fluorona, but for the flu, it might be a viable option to get better faster, right? It's stemming from an in vitro study, so take it all with a grain of salt. Trembolone induces micronuclei formation in hamster fibroblast lung V79 cells. In these cells, Trembolone has a cytotoxic, but also genotoxic effect, resulting in broken chromosome fragments after cell division. And Trembolone potentially has carcinogenic effects to Syrian hamster embryo fibroblast cell lines. It neoplastically transformed the she cells, uh, also causes micronuclei formation and increased uh, these genes which are related to cancer as well. Now, this has a weaker transforming activity compared to testosterone. Again, both studies are in vitro studies, so take it all with a grain of salt. Uh, but these are early signs that Trembolone or some of its metabolites have potential carcinogenic activity, resulting in mutations during increased cell proliferation and division. But these effects were not observed in C3H mouse embryo fibroblast cells. Similar studies contest these results though and say that the mutagenic effects of Trembolone were caused by impurities of the Trembolone used during the AMOS tests. I can't say that any of these studies are very conclusive, whether Trembolone is cytotoxic, genotoxic, or carcinogenic overall. I've linked all of these studies down below in the genotoxicity segment of the citations so you can form your own opinion if you're interested in doing all of the research yourself. And that being said, we don't see any of the Reveler S implanted cattle, or the trend abusing bodybuilders for that matter, die from cancers caused by Trembolone. Cattle die prematurely by going to the slaughterhouse, and bodybuilders die prematurely from heart attacks or blood clots well before cancers could potentially form. Hey, wait a minute. And this unique characteristic kind of confirms this. Trembolone has dose-dependent proliferative effects on human prostate cancer 22 or V1 cell lines, which is mediated through the androgen receptor with similar activity as dihydrotestosterone. So make sure you don't have any pre-existing prostate cancer present. Do your cancer marker screening, right? You have your prostate-specific antigen, whether that's total or free, get yourself diagnosed, maybe do an ultrasound from the front, not from the back, that's not required anymore. You don't need the finger assessment, those days are over, um, just to make sure that pre-existing prostate cancer doesn't get any worse while on the Trembolone sandwich. And now we finally get to the good parts. Trembolone reduces myostatin or prevents myostatin elevation when combined with estradiol. Without the estradiol, myostatin levels might increase by 200%, but we already addressed this in the myostatin video. I'll link it at the end of this one. Tremblone shows a dose-dependent increase in autocrine within skeletal muscle and the liver, insulin-like growth factor 1 production, which is then further enhanced when combined with estradiol. Some of these studies show when they took bovine satellite cells through biopsy that IGF-1 levels didn't really improve or increase. But of course, these beef are not training, and we all know that training also increases autocrine within skeletal muscle, IGF-1 production, and secretion into the surrounding tissue. So um, if you want elevated IGF-1 levels while taking Trembolone, make sure that you go to the gym. And while training also reduces myostatin levels and increases androgen receptor content of skeletal muscle, so while you're still here, go inject your Trembolone acetate and head to the gym already. Trembolone's double bond at the steroid nucleus reduces its receptor specificity, and thus Trembolone or some of its metabolites not only activate the androgen receptor, the estrogen receptors, and the progesterone receptors, but also block the glucocorticoid receptors as well as the mineralocorticoid receptors with various affinities. Trembolone is a selective androgen receptor modulator at lower dosages, right? This is very important to understand. Just like SARMs, Trembolone has SARM-like effects. This sustains muscle mass, sustains bone mineral density, but reduces prostate size. And this loses selectivity at higher dosages. We'll get into this when we start analyzing the Hershberger bioassays and form our own anabolic to androgenic rating a little bit later in this video. Training or not, Trembolone upregulates the androgen receptor content of skeletal muscle. This increases androgen receptor expression, increased cellular beta-catenin content, enhanced beta-catenin androgen receptor complexes, 
And this activates the adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase, AMPK. But this effect is more pronounced at lower concentrations. More evidence that more trembolone might not be better, at least when it comes to androgen receptor content of skeletal muscle. The androgen receptor relative binding affinity of trembolone compared to testosterone is 190 to 197 or 348, depending on which study you interpret. Trembolone's androgen receptor relative transcriptional activity compared to dihydrotestosterone is slightly higher at 110. Unfortunately, I couldn't find this compared to testosterone directly, but compared to DHT, it's let's say 10% more transcriptional activity. Trembolone is a concentration-dependent progesterone receptor agonist. It has a relative binding affinity for the progesterone receptor compared to progesterone either between 50 to 75, 47 to 75 or 137, but that's only for bov bovine progesterone receptors. Let's interject with a study here. Even though we're not done with the evidence-based unique characteristics, I think it's time for a study overlay 